Well, good evening, and I welcome you to our Wednesday night service. It's also on the eve of Thanksgiving, and I wanted to wish everyone a safe and blessed Thanksgiving. The Lord has blessed us in so many ways, and and with Christ Jesus, our Savior, and and then think about all the people that he has brought into our lives, and uh, and so in what a blessing they are. And I, I am thankful for the blessed hope of the coming of our Lord. And uh, I, I want us to think about him tonight. And then I want us to think about where we are as a nation and as a people uh, right now. I saw this and I wanted to read it to you. Uh, on the prophecy update and uh, it says here that that the White House launches year-end push to improve lagging COVID vaccinations and then the White House urges Americans to discuss COVID-19 vaccines over Thanksgiving and I wanted to discuss that tonight since it's on the eve of 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 Thanksgiving and uh, they also announced new enforcement guidelines guidance on COVID-19 vaccine mandates and then Biden's COVID czar for everything I guess it gives more importance to what they have to say or less one And he said, we're probably going to need to update our vaccine again next year and have Americans get vaccinated again next year. And he went on to say, now this is COVID, uh, Biden's COVID czar, God gave you two arms to get your COVID and flu shots. Wow. So that's just a, a little bit of the things that's happening. Of course, I could spend another 10 minutes just reading those things that are taking place around the world. But I wanted us to think about where we are as a a nation and where we are in our lives and, and what's facing us. The Lord is omniscient. He knows all things. He's all wise. He's all knowing. But Satan is not. So whatever the depth of Satan's knowledge, it would be acquired from the Lord. But he certainly is not omniscient. What is he? Well, 1 Peter 5, 8 says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, is a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. And so I mentioned this Sunday that adversary means an opponent opponent in a court of justice. So he's our adversary. He's the adversary. He's the devil. He's the devil. He's the enemy. He said, well, who sowed all these tares? Well, the Lord said it was the devil, the enemy. Not only that, but he was a murderer. Bible says in John 8, 44, a murderer from the beginning. And ye are of your fathers, the devil, he was talking to the Pharisees. You realize that if a person is not born again, that this verse is talking about them, you're of your father, the devil. We're born again. It, there, you know, as, as, as we look around, we see the need to be born again, to be born into God's family. We see the work of Satan and how he blinds the minds of people. And when he speaketh, he speaketh a lie. He talks about his own because he is a liar and the father of it. He counteracts the gospel. He's the tempter. For example, in Revelation chapter 12 and verse number 12, the Bible says, Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth. 
and of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. So what he was talking about was, I believe, 1260 days. Did, does he know how short? I'm not sure. I know he, he's not omniscient, but he knows the scriptures. So his knowledge would be acquired. You look around at what's taking place. Well, this transgender movement. And I think about that in light of what it's doing to to youth, what it's doing uh, to young girls. And I wonder where are the women, women of professing Christianity today? And one of the benefits of the gospel, you know, is the elevation of womanhood. Wherever the gospel is honored, women are elevated. Anywhere there is no honoring of the word of God, women are devalued. And there is no way this transgender philosophy is of the Lord is a perversion. This has happened because the church has been silent and the preachers don't want to mix with the political world. But we are not to be silent when our youth are mutilated and brainwashed about their creator and their selves. It is a political world that is shaping our direction and it should be the word of God and the church should be directing focus to the word of God, not being silent about it because it affects our lives. We are the body of Christ. We belong to him. We're in the world. We're his spokesman. So what are we facing? Well, we're facing a three-pronged attack. It's coming in three sides. Well, actually more than that, but I want to look at three sides. First of all, it's the economical system. You've all read about the cryptocurrency and the money was hijacked and it all crashed. And, but it was not backed by anything. There was no guarantee. And now people are clamoring for government control but you think for a moment what backs the dollar just the word of the government and our faith in it the financial collapse of fdx happened and then i find this amazing that it happened just as the biden administration is rolling out the text the test of the digital dollar they're talking about maybe it even starting next month. And you know what happens. They're talking about a test. That's just to get you used to it, regardless of what the test is, just to get us used to it and so they can implement it. Now, and the digital dollar will be more intrusive than we're led to believe. And the digital dollar can be con <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> can be controlled by the government in other words they can program it to control what you spend how much you spend and what you buy of course they're not going to tell you that in the beginning and then you think about for a moment our debt of what 31 trillion or 32 trillion dollars or thereabouts and, and that's not sustainable and, and they know it, and it's just like they've, they've run the national debt up and keep running it up and sending money to Ukraine when that we shouldn't be doing that, shouldn't even be involved in the, in the war there, in, in, in my opinion. But that $32 trillion is no way to sustain that. And... Uh, all, all, all of that is doing is focusing our attention more and people looking for something way out. And, and so the, here comes the digital dollar. Well, 
I don't know who the leaders are in all of this. And, you know, uh, nations come and go and leadership comes and goes, but all these, there, there's families that are involved and these families are forever. Just look around at some of them and go back in, uh, in history. Uh, it's uh, not just the control of the people that they're working for, it is the elitist carving out their place at the table. Uh, countries are racing to get their piece of the pie. Don't think for a moment that these people that are running this show are going to be under the same laws that we're under and suffer the same consequences that we suffer. Uh, they don't partake of anything that we partake of. And then you, I read recently about how the, the, uh, your credit score is being changed and, and it, people are offered the, certain things to elevate their credit score and it has nothing to do with credit, it has to do with how you interact socially and, and with climate change and all the propaganda that comes down within it. So your credit score is elevated. You, you know, the people are still the same credit risk, they just have a higher score. And so they are able to get loans and then in the end they're not able to pay for it. And what happens to that? Well, Freddie Mac has to lose all that money and they're just act, actually looking like they're plunging us into this financial disaster to force us into the digital dollar. And then the second prong is the religious system and the religious system and the climate laws are together as a religion. It's pushing the uniting of the world over all your beliefs and my beliefs. It doesn't matter what we're believing. They want everybody to come together for the good of the climate change, the good of the world, and the good of the environment and just love everybody. It doesn't make any difference what you believe or what the Bible has to say. I, I read this that an Israeli activists smashed, now listen to this, smashed the climate change Ten Commandments atop Mount Sinai. Actually took them up there and smashed them because he didn't think they went far enough. He was imitating Moses' smashing of the, ten, uh, of, the, of the Ten Commandments when he came down and found the worshiping of, of the idols. Now, yeah, in, a, in addition to that, the Pope has his Ten Commandments of Climate Change. And on these tablets that was smashed on Mount Sinai, it, it, it read, keep your promises in Hebrew, representing the Ten Spiritual Principles for Climate Repentance. The principles which are devoted by were developed by interfaith leaders at the Elijah Board of World Religious Leaders in the preceding days were read aloud before the tablets were smashed. All of this came out of the COP27 conference recently. So that is the United Nations Climate Change Conference of the Parties. That, that's... And, you know, that's a mouthful to say, so they just kind of shortened it down to COP27, a conference of the parties. These group of people got together and decided what we needed and how, what they would do, and we're supposed to follow right along. And, and I will send out my sermon notes uh, as soon as I can. And in this, there is, a, there is two links I want you to have. And one of them is a link to these laws, and it, it is from the Jerusalem Post. And uh, it, it, I mean, it's unbelievable when you begin to read the foolishness and, and the stupidity of, of people that are leading us and their incompetence. So I want you to have that, and, I, and that's in, 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 in my notes, and I will send them out. And so then another prong is the political system. The political system is pushing for the global system. And what we're seeing is the world coming to a, a point when there'll be the breakup uh, into regions. 
you know, paving the way for the beast in, in, in the confederation of, of nations. There'll be regions that these kings will be over. So all the elitists leading the world are, in, are positioning themselves to be able to get a piece of the pie, to be able to fit in, and, and everybody wants to be on top. Nobody wants to be on the bottom. So th there's, there's this fighting that's taking place uh, in order for them to be uh, on top and, and to get their, the, the, the first place. And, and that's just setting the stage for the Antichrist. That's all it's doing. So we see all of these things happening, and a few years ago, a prophecy would have said these things were happening after the rapture. So that's how things are changing in man's understanding. I don't know when the rapture is going to come, and neither does anyone else. The mercy and grace of God it lingers in his long-suffering. It's there, and, and he waits because... Uh, he's a God of love and mercy, and he, and he wants people saved. He does not want anyone lost to perish. He's given man an opportunity. And so that's why you can't set a date, because no one knows the depth of his long suffering. And that's what he tells us in Second Peter chapter 3, verse 9 and 10. And then along this line in the political system, I want to ask this question. Why are they pushing the vaccine? We just read about it. And I think Fauci on his way out at his press conference said that we would be needing masks and shutdowns and all this coming up uh, again. So it says, in, and I'd like for you to turn to this in Revelation 18, 23. It says, uh, and the light of the candle shall shine no more at all in thee. Now we're reading from Revelation chapter 18, verse number 23. And the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth, for by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. And there is a reference in, in the Old Testament. I'd like for you to go back to Nahum. And, and look at Nahum chapter 4. That's uh, right after Micah. Nahum chapter 3 and verse number 4. He said, Because of the multitude of the whoredoms <clears throat> of the well favored harlot, the mistress of witchcrafts that selleth nations through her whoredoms and families that selleth nations through her whoredom and families through her witchcraft. Talking about sorceries, sorceries. Wow, my goodness. Uh, the vaccine and the pandemics. Think about that for a moment. Population reduction. And will there be another? I think so, or, or another ever. That's what it's, I believe that it's about. So the word sorceries is where, get, where we get our word pharmacy. It, the literal meaning of it is our pharmacy. So you think about the vaccine, sorceries. But the question you have to ask yourself is this, who does that? refer to. He said, were the great men of the earth for thy sorceries. Who does it refer to? Well, no doubt it refers to the world system and to those who had personal involvement in the COVID-19 pandemic. 
and all of those who promoted the vaccine and then refused to say what was in the vaccine and lied about the necessity of it. The following is a link about the vaccine, and that's the second link that I want you to have, and it's included in, in my notes. So who does our sorceries refer to? Well, the answer is Satan uses the wickedness of man to promote his agenda. Man is lust for power and greed for money. And he uses the wickedness of man to promote his agenda. So let me conclude my thoughts tonight with these three thoughts. Number one, climate change is a lie. It's a made up lie. Man cannot destroy the world. So they say that's the greatest danger facing the world is we're going to destroy the earth. They said we destroyed the Eden, the, like the Garden of Eden. No, sin did. We didn't. Sin did. Our part in it, man sinned. The world is not ours to destroy because the Lord is the creator and the world is reaching its end according to prophecy to the time that the Lord has set. Climate change has become a religion. It's a lie in order to usurp power and authority from us. Man can destroy the earth. The Lord destroyed the earth once by water, the flood. And Genesis 8.22 says, While the earth remaineth seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter and day and night shall not cease. And then in Genesis 9.15 he said, And I will remember my covenant which is between me and you, and every living creature of all flesh, and the water shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh. But he will destroy it by fire. He said so. In 2 Peter chapter 3 verses 10 through 14. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in all holy conversation and godliness looking for? Now remember, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we according to his promise look for a new heaven and new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. We need to be looking for the Lord to come. We can't destroy the earth. We're not going to destroy the earth. As long as the church is here, the earth will be here. We have that God's promise to take care of us and to supply our needs. And then I want to say a few words to all those elitists who sacrificed our freedoms and brought hard times to many by refusing to allow the use of the resources provided by our Creator. I'm talking about the Lord's renewable energy and that not of the elitist, who are willing to sacrifice our way of life on the altar of the global agenda. Let me say this to us all. And to them, you will face the Lord as we will face him individually. That's what we need to be concerned about, is being ready to meet the Lord. Because there's coming a time when man will face the Lord. And I speak of two judgments that are talked about in prophecy. And they are, number one, found in Revelation chapter 20, verses 11 through 15. And that's the great white throne judgment. This is where all the unsaved of, of the earth and all mankind will stand before the Lord and they'll stand before him individually. He says, And I saw a great white throne in him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heavens fled away and the heaven fled away and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead small and great stand before God and the books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life. 
and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works, and death and hell were cast in the lake of fire. This is the second death, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast in the lake of fire. This judgment is an individual judgment. And that's for every person that's not saved. It doesn't matter who you are or what family you're in. And the next one is the judgment seat of Christ. 2 Corinthians 5.10 says we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. And this is going to be a very searching judgment. 1 Corinthians 3.13 says, Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide, which he hath built thereon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. But he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Know ye not, ye are the temple of God, and the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? Yes, to all mankind, there are two judgments in prophecy. Man must be at one or the other, which one will you be? Jesus said this in Revelation twenty-two twelve. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according to his work shall be. That's how quick and fast that his coming can be. But let me say, we're just a heartbeat from eternity. And that's how quick the Lord can come. Death or the rapture, we have to meet the Lord. It's not at what time the rapture will take place. The question that everyone must answer, are you looking for him? I hope and pray your faith is in Jesus Christ. If not, where is it? You may have be listening tonight, clinging to some false hope trying to convince yourself that you're saved and everything will be fine. But today, this evening, you can know that you're saved. You can come by faith alone in Christ alone and leave all of that extra stuff that weighs your mind and heart down that has no answer that leaves you endlessly searching for peace and there is no peace except in, by, in Jesus Christ and by faith in him. No, no hope in all the self-efforts of goodness or trying to believe, but Jesus guarantees you eternal life. Why not believe on him? John 5, 24 says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. And some believers, some saved people are living with their head in the sand, assuming because their name is on a church roll and they've been baptized, there is nothing left for them to do. You need to be in fellowship with the Lord. You can't be walking afar from Him and not, not walking close to Him. You cannot be absent from worshiping Him and absent from the Bible and careless in your life and say at the same time you're in fellowship with Him. That's not true. That's not possible. But He wants you to be in fellowship with Him. You can read all about it in 1 John chapter 1, verses 5 through 7. 
Number three, prophecy speaks of the tribulation when the wrath of God is poured out on the world. But the world are so blinded by the God of this world that they're not moved. I think one of the sad verses in the book of Revelation is found in chapter 9, verses 20 and 21. And it says, and it's talking about this time of tremendous pain and suffering through the wrath of God poured out because of the wickedness of men. And it says, and the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues yet repented not of the works of their hands. Can you believe that? I read from my phone and failed to cut it off. I apologize for that. There they are suffering, but yet will not repent of the works of their hands. Now listen, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. Neither repented they, are you listening to me? Neither repented they of their murders, nor their sorceries, nor their fornication, nor their thefts. And all four of those characteristics are of demonic worship and idolatry. Even in all of that suffering, they still refused to repent. I see today, and the older I get, the more I see. And the longer I preach, the more I see the blindness of mankind, even church people, to the gospel of Christ. And that is the work of Satan, the blind hearts. He... He wants to damn your soul in hell. And if he misses that opportunity and you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ for eternal life, he wants to try to wreck and ruin your life and to make you useless in the service of Christ. Remember, he is a liar and the father of it. The truth is in the Lord Jesus Christ. The truth is in the word of God. The truth is in what he says. He will always stand behind his word with his word. And you can stand on his word. Oh, my goodness. Uh, it, people act today as if life is a fairy tale. No sense of urgency. I'm talking about professing Christianity. Assuming you're saved, assuming everything's going to be all right and living under this false assumption, which is wrong. Oh, the Lord will take care of it. Does he fill out your income tax? Does he put gas in your car? No, you do. Does he go to work for you? No, you go to work. I don't know where we get all this assumption the Lord will take care of it. The Lord took care of your sin at Calvary and the gift of eternal life. Your life is in your hands. Do something with it. Listen, assuming you're saved when the Lord wants you to know. Did you hear Living in indifference, assuming that you know something and everything's all right and the Lord wants you to know. Listen to what he said in 1 John chapter 5. I want to begin reading in verse number 10. He said, he that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. And he that believeth not God hath made him a liar. You know, if man was writing that, he would have said, He that believeth on the Son of God hath a witness in himself, and he that believeth not does not have the witness. But that's not what he said. He really laid the law down and, and revealed how awful it is to live in unbelief, to turn your back on the gospel and turn your back on the Lord Jesus Christ. 
He said, He that believeth on the Son of God hath a witness in himself, and he that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his life. And this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe. If you haven't believed, he said, and that ye might believe. If you've believed on him, then you know you have eternal life or you're calling God a liar. That's what the scriptures have laid out before us. And he said, these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life. And if you don't know that, they're written that you might believe on him. Now, isn't that a wonderful promise? The unsaved man sees no need for the message of the cross because their minds have been blinded by Satan, but we know that the preaching of Jesus, the cross, is the power of God. We know that the gospel is the dynamite of God, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God and the salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. That is written, the just shall live by what? By faith, not by feeling. Not by what somebody said. You should live by faith. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Through the preaching of Christ, the message of the gospel of Christ, God shines that light into the heart. For God hath commanded the light to shine out of darkness that shined in our hearts. Faith is not a work you do. For by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourself. Faith is judging that he is true and able to keep that which you entrust to him. That being your soul and your eternal destiny. For I know in whom I have believed and am persuaded which means convince, convinced or believe. Are you convinced? Do you believe that he's able to keep that which you've entrusted to him against that day? You know, Christ wants you as a believer to be in fellowship with him. There is a work to do and we are to occupy till he comes. So much is caught up in the rapture, and rightly so you should be looking for the rapture. You should look, be looking for Christ to come. More than that, you should be in fellowship with him. You should be in obedience to him. You should be walking with him. He can come any minute. He will come when the Father says it's time to come. And until that time, we are to occupy for him. He gave you a job to do in this earth until he comes. He has something for you to do that only you can do. Your life is in your hands. Will you go where he wants you to go? I said, Lord... Let me walk in the fields. And he said, no, walk in the town. I said, Lord, there are no flowers there. And he said, no flowers but a crown. I said, but the skies are black and there is nothing but noise and din. And he wept as he sent me back and he said, there's more. He said, there's sin." I said, but the air is thick and fogs are veiling the sun. He answered, yet souls are sick. And my, they are sick. I mean, you look around at the wickedness of the leaders of this world and the leaders that's of, of our country and, and the things that they do and allow that's contrary to the word of God. You see the wickedness of man. They need the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. I said, but the air is thick and fogs are veiling the sun. He answered, yet souls are sick and souls in the dark undone. I said, I shall miss the light 
and friends will miss me, they say. And he answered, choose tonight if I'm to miss you or they. I pleaded for time to be given, and he said, is it hard to decide, my child? It will not seem so hard in heaven to have followed, followed the steps of your God. I cast one look at the fields, then set my face to the town, and he said, my child, do you yield? Will you leave the flowers for the crown? Then into his hand went mine, and in my life I bowed to his will. And now I walk in a light divine, the path I'd feared to see. And let me add my thoughts to that poem. Will you, this evening, leave the flowers of your own will and live in the path he's chose for you? You will be glad you did later. And your family will be glad you did. And some will be snatched from hell because you bowed to his will. We have a lot going on and a lot of things taking place. And I think that you have to talk about prophecy in the word of God through the lens of what's happening today in our world and around us. And the pressure that is put and the choices that are before. In the midst of all of this, you have to keep your eyes on Jesus. And if he says walk in the town, you'll have to leave the flowers to walk where he wants you to walk. Because there are souls undone. And there are people that need to be snatched from the jaws of death and hell. And only the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ will do that. Do you love him tonight? I want to thank you for joining with us and all those by internet, and I do wish you a happy and safe Thanksgiving. And I know you're thankful for all that the Lord has done for you. Love one another, pray for one another, and look, be looking for Jesus. He's coming. Father, thank you for all you've done for us. In Jesus' name, amen. All hearts clear? You're dismissed.